volatility on the rise over the past few weeks. Our next guest, though, says the S&P does remain in an uptrend. Joining me here, Post 9, Chris Verona, Strategus, recently named one of the top macro analysts on the street. No pressure, then, for this no appearance pressure. to answer these questions <laughs> that I have for you. Uh, all right, so we're consolidating yeah. a bit, but we're still yeah. in an uptrend. Why? Yeah, I mean, if you think about 70 percent of all stocks are above their 200 day moving average. And we just always default to trend, particularly around an event. OK, uh, I, I think surprises in this business typically break in the direction of the trend. So it would take a, a lot for us to want to bet against that here. And I think what's interesting is others are. And if you look at the put buying over the last couple of days, I mean, put call ratios on Friday and today are the highest we've seen in years. So there is protection being put on here. We've seen VIX already go from call it 14 to 24 yeah. uh, over the last month or so. And I, I think that's excessive kind of given what the framework is into this. Oh, why so? I mean, the VIX right now is like 22, yeah. a little north of 22. Yeah. Why, why does that feel excessive to you? So I think there's uh, two things here. When vol is rising without credit conditions deteriorating, mm -hmm. be skeptical of the rise in vol. And this entire move in VIX from you know, 14 to 24, credit conditions have been remarkably, remarkably benign here. So we're not seeing the type of stress or weakness in double B spreads or triple B spreads that would suggest, hey, vol is telling us something about how it perceives the economy moving forward. I don't think that's what this is about. I think this is positions getting squared up ahead of an event actually to this week. Yeah, and election and I, Fed decision. I, I'd be careful kind of leaning in that direction. 5,700, yeah. a key level you're watching. I mean, we're a little bit above it here, not much. Yeah, I don't want to focus too much on precision. Put your thumb at you know, 5650, and I think within 50 points on either side, okay. you'll get a good kind of post-election tradable low. The fact is, and as we've shown in our work just time and time again, into an election, whatever the prevailing trend of the market was going in, more times than not, it tends to persist uh, uh, on the other side. And I think what's been so key here over the last few weeks in particular is what hasn't changed. Largely, financials continue to lead. Industrials continue to lead. Discretionary has been better than staple. So mm -hmm. it doesn't seem like the market is reevaluating how it feels about the economy. That's what I want to focus on as we kind of look to these last you know, eight, ten weeks of the year. Do I remember correctly in that one of your prior appearances, we talked about the, the, the trend of the market and you suggested yeah. that as long as the financials remain firm, then it's OK. You don't want the financials to break down. It would be a bad sign for this leg of the bull market, if you want to if you want to yeah, put it that I, way. You know, Scott, I, I, I right? always, yeah, you do. And I, I always like approaching the market from the perspective of what has been most consistent. OK, financials has been part of this tape for 12 months. So if our call is going to change, I think the the tenants of the call that have been most reliable probably have to deteriorate. And I don't think you can make that case with financials yet. I don't think you can make it with industrials yet. I mean, if anything, over the last four or five weeks, Discretionary has actually gotten better here as well, certainly at the expense of staples. So what you're not seeing is money move uh, wholesale into the defensive corners of the market. And I, I continue to want to say, OK, it looks like a market that's operating in the status quo. What, what about semis? Yeah. Um, we mentioned NVIDIA, it's, you know, pushing Apple right there on the top of the market cap chain. Um, it obviously has had an yeah. incredible run, but not every stock is in NVIDIA in this market. No, how, how are you judging the semis? This is the one place where I really think you've seen, and this has really been true all spring into the summer, into the fall, where you've seen leadership really fracture or split. We know how good the NVIDIA chart is. We know how good Broadcom has been. Where's AMAT? Where's LAM Research? Where's ASML? Where's Samsung? It is, you know, of what is perceived as leadership, mm -hmm. I think it's the faultiest of that. It's the weakest under the surface. Only 25% of semis are actually above their 200-day moving average here. You do get some good seasonality with semis in the next four, six weeks. I think if you got a bounce, I'd be more inclined to fade that bounce in semis oh. than I would be chasing. I've heard some suggest uh, healthcare is a good place to be. Mm -hmm. Uh, you say it's nearing an oversold condition, but still in a very pronounced downtrend. Yeah. Very that, pronounced. That, that might be generous. Okay. Uh, when you look at the relative performance of healthcare, uh, it's been making lower lows in any relative sense for the better part of the last two years. I need to see that inflect. There are some short term positives here. You have seen maybe a little bit of life get breathed into some pharma and some biotech. Um, but to say that healthcare is about to make some massive leadership change, I, I think would be premature here.